What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my Wiko Ride 2 review. So let's get started. So this is my review of the Wiko Ride 2. Now I'd like to thank Wiko for being kind enough to send this out to me to cover here on the channel. Now all opinions expressed in this video are my own, but I do appreciate the support. Now, about a year ago, Wiko sent me the predecessor to this phone, which was known as the Wiko Ride. And there have been a variety of different improvements from the original Ride to the Ride 2. Now, this phone is exclusive to Boost Mobile, so if you are a Boost customer or you're considering switching into Boost, then you might want to consider this. At the moment, you can get this phone at Boost for just $34.99, so it definitely is a very entry-level option. But as you'll see in this video, the device actually offers quite a few features and benefits to really make it worth that price tag. But before I show you everything about the phone, let's take a closer look at the items included in the box. So again, here's the box, Boost Mobile, Wiko Ride 2. Now when you open this up, there is a smaller box right inside with more Wiko branding on it. Now the phone would typically go here, and then we have a micro USB cable for charging and data transfer. So it's actually a pretty long cable, which is nice to see. We have a USB wall adapter for charging. We have a safety and warranty guide, and typically the battery would also be in the box here, but I have installed it already into the phone. So here is the actual Wiko Ride 2 itself. Now this device features a 5.45 inch display, so it is a bit smaller than many of the other phones that I've featured here on the channel lately. Now the display itself is LCD at 720p. We're getting a PPI of 295, so actually pretty decent here. And we're getting an 18 by 9 aspect ratio. So as you can see, the form factor of this phone is certainly a bit more traditional compared to many of the other devices that have launched lately. We do have pretty thick bezels on the top and bottom, and there's also no notch to be found, but I do like that we have squared off corners. Now one of the features with this phone that is pretty unique, especially, is that we do have a front facing flash. That is definitely something that you can't find very often anymore. Now the front facing camera on this device is 5 megapixels, stay tuned to later on in the video as I'll show you photo and video samples from all the cameras on this device. Now with the Wiko Ride 2, we're getting 32 gigabytes of internal storage, and we're getting micro SD card expansion. There's no wireless charging with this phone, there's also no fingerprint sensor, and there's no face unlock either. So if you do want security on the phone, then you are going to have to add a pin code to access the phone whenever you want to. Now on the back side of the device, we just have one camera here, and it is 8 megapixels. There's no portrait mode with the rear or front cameras either. And internally here with the phone, we're getting two gigabytes of RAM and the MediaTek Helio A22. Now, I've already covered quite a few other devices on the channel with the same amount of RAM and the same processor, and certainly you're not gonna get anywhere near flagship performance here with the phone, but it is adequate and it will get the job done. I will say though that the MediaTek Helio A22 is certainly a big step up from whatever processor ran last year we go ride because there certainly is a noticeable performance upgrade when using this phone. Now I did download Geekbench 5 and I did run a benchmark test with the device. So what I recommend doing is installing this benchmark app on your own current phone and then comparing the scores on your phone to these scores to see if this phone will be giving you a performance upgrade. But you can see here I got a single core score of 163 and a multi-core score of 482. So again, compare that to your current device to really see what kind of improvements you will get with the Wiko Ride 2. But here's how things look on the camera app. This is of course with the front-facing camera, and then we can do that front-facing flash. Let's do that right now. There we go. So it does brighten things up a bit, and you can have it as a continuous torch, you can have it completely off, or you can have it activate automatically. So it's really up to you. There's also a time-lapse mode. There's also beauty mode. So there are some different choices here. Now there is no portrait mode, but we do have HDR. So again, they do give you some different options here, but if you are looking for a phone with portrait mode, then you're not gonna find it with the Wiko Ride 2. Now with the Wiko Ride 2, the battery is removable. You have to install it when you get the device itself, but essentially just take the back off of the phone. There is a little notch on the side where you can grab and pull this back cover off, but then from there you can install the battery. Now the battery itself is 2,500 milliamp hours, so not really the biggest battery as far as the capacity goes, but considering that this phone does have a smaller display, 
compared to many other devices out there means that there is going to be a lot less for the actual battery to power. So with this phone, you should expect to get up to 15 hours of talk time. Now the software on here is Android 10, and there was some bloatware pre-installed, which is pretty typical, especially with low-end carrier phones, but it's completely manageable. But overall, the software optimization is very good here with the phone. And after installing a variety of different apps, and taking photos and videos. You can see here that I still have quite a bit of space available on the phone. So I have only used 8.8 .8 gigabytes of the 32 that we get here. And of course, out of that 8.8 .8 gigs, a good chunk of that is the actual system software itself. So again, a good software experience here at the phone, good optimization as well. And no, the phone's not gonna perform nearly as well as a flagship would, but at the same time, the performance is good enough that if you wanna use this phone for basic web browsing, social media, and then of course doing phone calls and sending text messages, then the phone will get the job done. But now that we've gone over the major specifications of the phone, let's talk a bit more about the hardware. So I already talked quite a bit about the front panel here, but that's definitely one of the biggest improvements that I've noticed with the Wiko Ride 2 compared to the original Wiko Ride is that we are getting a much better looking display. I'm really impressed with the colors that we're getting and the overall crispiness of it. And the viewing angles are pretty good as well. Now the material that the rest of the phone is made out of, which is plastic, actually looks nice as well. I really like this navy blue color here, and I like how it wraps around the sides and back of the phone, and the phone itself doesn't really pick up any fingerprints. But on the left side of the phone, we have nothing. On the right side of the phone, we have the place where you can grab onto the back to pull it off. We also have the power button and volume button. Then up top, we have the noise canceling microphone, and we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then on the bottom, we have the microphone and micro USB port. Now, typically I do prefer to see USB-C on the various devices that I use, but considering that this phone is just $34.99, I do understand why they gave it micro USB. It is something that I can live with, especially considering the low price tag of this phone. Now taking a look at the backside of the device, we have a speaker at the bottom, Wiko branding, we have the flash and the camera. So just one camera again with this phone, so you're not gonna get any advanced photography features, but at the same time, you can take some pretty decent pictures. But let's now take a look at some photo and video samples from the Wiko Ride 2. So in general, the camera quality from the Wiko Ride 2 is adequate for a phone in this price range. Now there's plenty of room for improvement, but at bare minimum, the phone does take good enough pictures that you can use them. Whether you're taking pictures for your job or you're taking pictures to post on social media from a vacation, the phone takes good enough pictures where someone's not gonna look at them and suddenly think that you're using a very low-end phone. Now, colors can be washed out from time to time, but again, that is a side effect of using a phone in this price range. So I really don't have any complaints when it comes to the quality but I'll let you be the judge by looking at the pictures yourself. I will say though that if the phone did have portrait mode, that would be a nice bonus, especially since I have used other phones that are under a hundred bucks that do offer that feature. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with a front-facing test video from the Wiko Ride 2 at 1080p. So let me know what you think of the quality as well as the audio quality from the microphone. Really curious to know what you think about it. And here's a test video using the rear camera with the Wiko Ride 2. The sun is pretty intense today, by the way. We do have autofocus in video mode, which is good. Now going through Instagram, for example, can be a bit laggy from time to time. You are gonna run into some stutters here, but it does work well enough that you can actually get through the app and consume content at your own pace. Now also going through different stories also works pretty well. Again, not the smoothest process ever, but it does work. And then you can go over and record your own stories as well if you want to. So I'm recording a story with the Wiko Ride 2. A story with the Wiko Ride 2. If you want to, so I'm recording. So a, a pretty decent microphone as well with this device. This is the Rebel 4. Now these two phones are both exclusive to Metro by T-Mobile and T-Mobile, and the Rebel 4 Plus 
is being offered at an MSRP of 189 compared to an MSRP of 120. So the Wiko Ride 2 is pretty decent at watching video content. The actual videos themselves do look nice on the display. And another bonus too is that since this phone does have a 720p display, you can watch YouTube videos at up to 720p. So that's pretty decent. Now the speaker on the back is not that great. It really isn't that loud. Now it's good enough that you can sit down and watch videos or listen to music on this device. But for the best content consumption experience, I would certainly recommend pairing up this phone with headphones. So in conclusion, is the Wiko Ride 2 worth buying? Well, I would say that at the price of $34.99, there really aren't too many other options out there, especially if you're looking for 32 gigs of internal storage, and decent performance with two gigabytes of RAM and the MediaTek Helio A22. Now I know that none of the specifications about this phone are necessarily impressive, but again, if you're looking to spend just 35 bucks on a phone, this is about as good as it's gonna get. So unless you're willing to spend more and go for a more premium device, then this phone is certainly a very good value. And I know that Boost Mobile is always offering a variety of different promotions for their various devices, so there might even be better deals out there for the Wiko Ride 2 at the time that you're watching this video. So I definitely recommend heading over to Boost Mobile's website and seeing what they're offering for the Wiko Ride 2. But I would say that my two favorite features about this phone are that we're getting 32 gigabytes of internal storage and that we're getting a nice looking display here. Really though, looking at the display, you can see how good the colors are, and those really are two things that make this phone stand out. But I hope you enjoyed my review about the Wiko Ride 2. If you have any questions about the phone, definitely let me know, but I'll see you in the next video.